Hi, I'm Shashank. Now let's begin. Ekadashi, a very popular tradition in India and also a very, very auspicious day. Our elders say that the day is dedicated to Lord Vishnu and observing a fast on this particular day absolves you from all the sins. Shashank, tomorrow we have to fast. But why? Tomorrow is Ekadashi. So? Just listen to what I say. This is the problem, guys. Our elders itself don't tell us anything. They expect us to follow all these traditions blindly. But what exactly is this Ekadashi? Why do people fast? Fasting for a day gets you hungry. But how does it get rid of all the sins? Is there only a spiritual significance to it? If fasting can get rid of all the sins, then why not fast every day? Why? Huh? The word Ekadashi can be split into Eka and Dasa, which is 1 plus 10. Ekadashi simply means 11. One of the most important objects to be considered during this day is the moon. According to Indian astronomy, it takes around 15 days for a new moon to become a full moon and vice versa. A new moon day is known as Amavas and a full moon day is known as Purnam. The 11th lunar day in each of these cycles is known as Ekadashi and that's why the name. <laughs> During the transition from a new moon to a full moon, the moon tends to reveal itself and become brighter every day. Therefore, this phase is called as the Shukla Paksha, which means the bright or the waxing phase. Similarly, during the transition from a full moon to a new moon, the moon tends to become darker every day. Therefore, this phase is called as the Krishna Paksha. Remember, Krishna does not refer here to Lord Krishna, but Krishna means dark. That's why this phase is also called as the dark or the waning phase. Now, what has all this got to do with fasting? Is the moon going to change its course? No. Will the moon be affected? No. Let us first see the effect of fasting in our body. So, yeah, let's see. The human body is a very complex machine with a complex design. So, whenever we have something to eat, the digestive system has got work to do. Basic school knowledge. The system has to break down the food to release energy. But imagine a machine working continuously without any rest. This will reduce the efficiency. The purpose of fasting is to give the body and the digestive system a break. When this break is given, the cells in our body kill the old and unproductive cells. This process is called as autophagy. Dr. Yoshinori Osumi, a Japanese biologist, received a Nobel Prize for his research in autophagy during the year 2016. This process also helps in fighting diseases like the Parkinson's disease. It is also medically proven that fasting once every fortnight can increase your lifespan. Really? The cells in our body multiply continuously and during this process, the DNA also splits. The DNA contains telomeres. Every time the DNA splits, a portion of the telomeres is lost. The amount of telomeres determines the lifespan of a human being. Fasting once in every 15 days helps reduce the cell multiplication and reduces the loss of telomeres. Elizabeth Blackburn, Carol Grader and Jack Sostak received a Nobel Prize for their research in telomeres in the year 2009. Sorry if I pronounced their names wrong. Well, maybe our ancestors deserved a Nobel Prize as well. But why fast only on Ekadashi? Why not any other day? Honestly speaking, you can follow your own cycle of 15 days. But what made our ancestors believe that Ekadashi is the best day? Well, we all know that the Earth is affected by the Moon's gravity. From this day of Ekadashi, as the moon becomes a new moon or a full moon, this effect becomes stronger. It can be observed that the tides in the seas and the oceans rise higher. Do not forget that the human body consists of 70% water. So, does this mean that our body... Did you believe all that? No. 
The body does not experience tides like the seas and the oceans. But yes, there is a tendency for the water and other fluids in our body to rise. So maybe, just maybe, the fluids may not be as effective for digestion as they normally would be. Maybe that's why our ancestors chose this day. The fact that they would have thought about all this thousands of years ago is really cool. But the question rises, if the mighty oceans can experience such high tides, then why not the water in our body? This is where the surface area comes into play. Well, you know what, just see the link in the description below. This is not a physics class. It is also observed that during this day, rice is not consumed. This is because, according to our elders, rice contains shani. Lol. According to research, it is found that the telomeres are directly affected by the calorie intake. That's why rice and grains are avoided during fasting. Not just because of shani or evil. But then what usually happens is we avoid rice, but we have sweets, dosa, upma, rabadi, tea, coffee. The actual feast takes place on this day. And still people claim that they fast. To all those who claim to be very spiritual and those who claim to follow the tradition perfectly, remember, the tradition says that you have to fast for 36 hours without water. Yes, this is known as Nirjala Ekadashi. No food and water from the sunset of Dashami till the sunrise of Dwadashi. Even medical research says that really good results are obtained by fasting for 36 hours every 14 to 15 days. But over the years, we have molded the tradition according to our convenience. All the signs and benefits have been lost. But at least follow the tradition correctly. The whole purpose of Ekadashi is to give your body a break. And the best way to do that is fasting. But if you're not able to observe a proper fast, you can have water, fruits, fruit juices. You can even have your regular meal. It's fine. But then don't claim to be fasting and don't expect to be free from all the sins. Lol. So, our ancestors were probably much ahead of their time than we expected. They have taken into account the scientific reasons along with the spiritual. If you have any more information about Ekadashi, please let me know through the comments below. And yes, like and subscribe.